let's set up your TikTok live stream so your viewers get a random option when they trigger an event such as a follow or sending likes. Here are some examples that I've seen people do, but I encourage you to be unique and come up with your own idea. Now this guide works for Live Studio, Streamlabs and OBS, but it also works with all-in-one browser solutions such as today's sponsor Riverside. Riverside allows me to live stream, record and edit both landscape and vertical clips. And there's a link and discount both on screen and in the description. So I'm in my studio here and if I just hit the record button, you can see in the studio here, I have the option to add my OBS virtual camera. So if I just turn it on inside OBS by starting it, it will now send all of my OBS into Riverside, which for me you can see includes Tickfinity. And you can see at the top of Riverside, I have my live room added, and I can just press the plus button to add more platforms, which includes TikTok. Not only can I easily multi-stream in Riverside, as you can see here, I can also edit live streams. So here I've used Riverside's Magic Clips tool to automatically generate me vertical clips. And as you can see, I've exported a few of my favorites. So thank you Riverside for giving me access to this awesome tool. Once again, I'll link it and put my discount code both on screen and in the description. Now getting back to the setup process, before we go ahead and set up Tickfinity, you have the option to put sounds, videos and images on the screen. So if you want to do that, I suggest you save all of the relevant things you need into its own folder. So for example, here I have different Fortnite ranks. And I found specifically for ranks, you can use things such as wikis to save the images easily. Once you've got all the assets you want, go ahead and download the Tickfinity desktop app in the description for Windows users. And if you're on a Mac, use the Tickfinity website also in the description. Start on the setup page of Tickfinity by adding in your username. Do not click the connect button. You only need that button when you're live and click on TikTok login on the left and make sure you've logged in to TikTok. If I now click on Tickfinity Pro, you'll find that if you've signed up for a new account with my link, you have a discount for it. And it gives you unlimited actions and events, which will help us for this video. So it's worth considering, but of course it's not required. Now let's do two examples. The first one is the Fortnite rank one that I mentioned earlier. So in this example, we're gonna randomly pick a Fortnite rank when somebody follows you. So for all of these on Tickfinity, we're gonna click through to the actions and events page. So you're gonna start by creating a new action and effectively you want an action for each Fortnite rank. And you can see there's a lot of options here, but first I've just named the action for each rank. And of course, in our example, we're showing a picture of the rank. So I just clicked select file to choose the correct picture. But as you saw, I also put on the screen the name of the person. I said, thanks for following and the rank. So you check the show alert user plus text box as well. And you just type your message into the box. Feel free to be more creative than me. I then picked the yellow color and you can customize the way it looks even further within the global overlay settings here. And for example, if I don't want their profile picture, I could turn that off. We'll test the way that looks later, but let's just scroll down and check the rest of the settings. The display duration is key here. That's how long it shows on the screen for. And if you want it to appear a little bit faster, then uncheck the fade in or out option. Typically, all of these other default options are perfectly fine, so we press save. And then we need to make a new one for each Fortnite rank. In my example, I've only got two. To help speed up the process though, you can use this duplicate button. So let's just delete the Unreal rank and pretend I don't have it yet. So I'll press the duplicate action button and I'll press yes. And you can see I've got this copy here and I can press the pencil icon to edit it. And of course, I'm just gonna rename this one to Unreal rank. And then all I do is replace this picture with the Unreal picture. And then I replace where it says bronze one with Unreal. And of course it saved all of the other settings, including my color and the duration and any other setting that I've got. So I then press save and you just repeat that duplicating until you have all the ranks that you want. Now here's where the randomization kicks in. We click create new event and everyone is able to trigger the event. In our example, it's triggered by a follow and then underneath trigger one of these actions, we make sure it's under the random section here. So we leave the one above blank and click select and then choose one of the actions and click again, choose the next one until you've got them all added to the list. So now if I save this, I've got a 50-50 chance in my example between Bronze 1 and Unreal. Of course, I would encourage you to add more ranks if you're going to use this example. We're not done yet though, of course. We need to now add it to Live Studio, OBS or Streamlabs. So make sure you scroll down underneath overlay screen settings. 
I've increased my max queue length a bit in case I get a lot of alerts, but just click on the screen one link to copy it and then add it to your relevant software. So here inside TikTok Live Studio, I press add source on the left and I choose the link option and press add and I control V to paste it into the box. And crucially, we're gonna use a custom resolution. So inside our alert, we need to fit both the text and the image within these boundaries. So typically I found I need to increase the height a little bit. So let's try 800 by 800 and press add. And you can see it says link on the left. Now, if I click on it, you can see the outline of it in both portrait and landscape. And of course, Live Studio being Live Studio has added it in the wrong dimensions, but it's got the correct aspect ratio. So of course, we now need to drag the corners to resize it. And in my example, I'll make it quite big and I'll put it in the middle of the screen in landscape. And then I'll click link on the left again. And again, that's not the right dimensions. So I'll just make it a bit bigger and I'll put it in the middle of the screen again for our example. And I'm now gonna rename it. So I'm gonna right click rename and I'll name it Tickfinity Screen 1 and press enter. And I'll do the same on landscape as well and press enter. That's just so we're not confused. And I've shrunk Tickfinity down a bit because now it's time to test that it works properly. So there's two ways to test it. You could just press these play icons, but it's better yet to scroll down and simulate a follow. So if I press simulate and move it out the way, you can see it's put the text and the image. And what it's actually showing me there is I need a bit more height. So let's click on the settings of the link and let's change the height here to 1000 instead of 800 because my image is quite big. And let's resize it a little bit. I might have to shrink it down and resize it a little bit. And I'll do the same on the portrait one. And then basically just keep testing and playing around until you're happy with it. That looks a lot better now. I might also just shrink the image down using something like Photoshop or Canva. But for the purposes of our test, that is working fine. Let me just quickly show you OBS. So in OBS, you just press the plus button and choose browser. And then you paste it into the box. And once again, change the height to something like a thousand or whatever height fits what you've got. Shut down source when not visible and press OK. And you'll see you've got it on the screen here and you can drag it around. And likewise, if you're using the vertical canvas instead, press the plus button, choose the browser option. And you can either add it in if it's already there or press new and you just double click it to edit it the same as in landscape mode all right let's run through a second example where i guess the age of the viewer when they send 100 likes so once again if you're going to put any assets on the screen like videos pictures or audio make sure you prepare those into a folder in this example we're just putting text on the screen and i'll optionally show you how to also add in text to speech as well so once again we're on the actions and events page and you basically make a new action for each age you want to put on the screen so i've picked some random ages here let's look at how to do it you press create new action and you put the age at the top so i've put age 18 in this one and you check show alert user plus text and i've put thanks for 100 likes and then i've guessed their age once again i've set a color and you can change some of the other text settings and overlay settings in these global overlay settings and of course you can play around with that after you've tested it and if you also want text to speech to read out loud then you check that box and basically what i would do is just Control c Control v into this box but i also need username so i'm going to copy the username including the brackets and i'll choose a voice and now the voice is going to read out loud for example, Harry, thanks for 100 likes, you are 18 years old. Of course, you can test that as well. Again, in this example, I'll keep it more simple, so I'll uncheck it. But the viewers might like the text-to-speech. We'll scroll down and set a duration. I recommend a relatively low one, such as four seconds. All of these other default options are fine, so press save. And once again, use the duplicate option. And again, when you duplicate, all you have to do is change the name of the action and just change the number here. And all of the other options will be saved. So that just saves you a lot of time, especially when making a lot of actions. So of course, now we need a new event. So press create new event. And this time, instead of a follow, it is sending likes. Of course, you can choose any of these options, for example, a share or a sub, but I've chosen sending likes taps and I've changed the number of likes to 100. And once again, we ignore this option and choose the random option. And we just click into the box to choose all of the actions we've created and add them in one by one until they're all there and press save. And then once again, our final step is to add it to Live Studio OBS or Streamlabs. To do that, we click on screen one, we head into our software, we add the source either as a link source inside Live Studio or as a browser source in OBS or Streamlabs. And as I say, make sure you play with the dimensions to find the dimensions that suit what you've got. In this example, since it's just text, I've gone 800 by 300, I've lowered the height. 
and I've right clicked and renamed it to Tickfinity Screen 1 if you've not done that already. Of course also make sure you've turned on the sound if you're using text to speech or sounds or videos. And once again let's shrink down Tickfinity a little bit and we can only test this particular one using the play icons at the top because the like simulator only simulates 15 likes and we've got 100 likes as the minimum. But anyway, I can simulate the H42 one, for example, and you can see it's nicely showing on the screen. So again, use your imagination. Those are just two examples. You can do it with any event, such as a share or a sub as well. And if you prefer to use OBS or Streamlabs, then you want a stream key and you can watch this video to learn how to get one for free.